Charleston County School Board rescinded its pay raise vote on Thursday night. In this special edition of Quintus Close Ups, I sat down with Tony Lewis of the Charleston County District 20 Constituent School Board. And be sure to download the free Quintus Close Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Tony! Hey brother, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Well, it was always good to be in the presence of a king. Yes, sir. And another king in front of another king. And also to know who you are. As I say, you to walk right, walk up with your head right, and walk with no problems. Knowing who you are. Yeah. Nobody have to tell you and put a symbol on you and say, hey, you this. No, you know who you are. Because you're from the king of kings. Okay? The most high. Mm -hmm. And I know who I am. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah, brother. August is going to be here. It would have been a year since that whole voicemail controversy. Mm -hmm. Who is Tony Lewis, August 2016 to August 2017 right now in your mind? Brother, I'm the same Tony Lewis. Going to speak up for truth, and the truth is going to stand when the light fall, bro. And I'm going to still remain that person, okay? Anywhere there's injustice, to any, and let me clear this, anybody, my white brothers and sisters, my black brothers and sisters, my Spanish brothers, and sisters, my Muslim, my Chinese, brothers, anybody, I'm gonna stand up for it, brother. Okay. And you talk about obviously standing up. Let me take you to 75 Calhoun Street. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is my NapoleonCorey.com website said this: mm -hmm. Charleston School Board cancels its own pay raise before the first check is cut. Mm -hmm. Where does your mind go to, Tony? Well, my mind goes again, uh, brother, that you cannot allocate something for yourself unless you touch. It. That you go through your legislators because there was allocated 1967 right. in the law that what the stipend was a per diem stipend was given. Okay, so you can't give yourself a raise. You got to go through them. And as I say, I spoke with some legislators, friends of mine, and they already enlightened me that's the only way you could have got a raise. Okay, what it should be otherwise because hey, you got City of Charleston, right? Can get their own raise. You got Charleston County, you can get their own raise. North Charleston. You know, you got all these other government, governmental entities, you can get their raise, but why couldn't Charleston County School District? See? So I, I, I got to look. This is no just 22 situation. And I like to put that to my legislative friends, you know. And the Postal Court article actually says this the county school board will continue to receive a $25 per meeting stipend as provided in the 1967 Act of Consolidation that created the school district, constituent board members will continue to receive a $15 stipend. Mm -hmm. And I know Michael Miller basically said in the school board meeting on Thursday night that, mm -hmm. hey, even though we have repealed this particular vote, mm -hmm. it doesn't stop the lawsuit. Right. Well, again, uh, it's deserving for the board, and especially, especially the constituent board, because the constituent board has limited powers and limited things they do, but they do much more on another basis than our county board do. Because our county board just meet on my own Mondays, our special call meetings. Right. You know, when we meet, we have to meet with our, our expulsion, our, you know, our, uh, there's a whole lot, okay? Um, transfers right. and, th and things like that. You know, but I should see, I want to see that we be allocated because these scholars come in our neighborhoods, schools, we should have a say so directly to that, those kind of things. And when I say that, because we should have a say in who the staff come in our schools, who the teachers come in our schools, and all principal too, because they come in our schools in the constituent district. See, so when we have to answer to our constituents, more so in the county board members. Let me talk more about your constituents. Obviously, you're around here all the time talking to people. Mm -hmm. What are you listening to it these days? Well, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of things uh, uh, being allocated on, um, you know, Brother Quentin, uh, that we need to change a lot of things. Um, and a lot of things need to change, and there need to be much more input from the community before you go forward, and I'm talking not just anybody who handpick out the community, but folks who these things directly affect, okay? And I'd like to see a lot more things going with all our student men and our African-American students, mm -hmm. because they're getting the shot in the stick, brother. 
They give them the shot in the stick. And then when they get the shot in the stick, then guess who pays for it? Society, the community. Why they heap ripping havoc on the community by making the mistakes they're making out here. Okay? I'm not gonna say crime, I'm gonna say the mistakes they're making out here. Because someone failed them somewhere. Okay? Not all all on the parents. Parents has a part in that too. Because charity again, because I was talking to some ladies earlier, mother and daughter, charity begins home. That's like I told them, I said, you see your dog you got there? Before that dog come out abroad, you gotta teach that dog how to act, not to go around biting people, and how to walk and how to do things. Okay? So that's what we have to teach our kids, our scholars, brother. Okay? You talk about the scholars, you know, in my previous interviews with you, obviously, you had some issues with a potential uh, merger of a Lego at Burke High School. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand right now with that issue? Well, I haven't heard no more about it, but um, <laughs> trying to merge it, but I don't think it would be a good marriage because then everybody be on their own. That's like if I see a, for, for example, I may see someone from a uh doing something negatively or uh, making a mistake and being from the Burke perspective, I can't say nothing because that's not under my guidance and my law running the school and vice versa. So I don't see that as a good marriage. I really don't. And obviously, as we talk about Burke High School, where is the Burke High School feature in your mind? Well, again, I, I, I don't see it in a good light. I really don't. Because I share with you again, um, I'm going to go from the perspective of uh, the football field. Now, the football field was talking about since last year. Uh, in 16, when I was bringing it up, now I've seen nothing done. You know, you're talking about allocating money to fix all these other football fields. Burke Stadium's still there. See, but everybody runs out the woodwork and want to do this and do that about the situation. But why? I don't hear nothing no more with this, like, shoot, put dirt on and bury it. See, because nobody's speaking on about it. But now let somebody pick up the ball and run and say about it. Then everybody want to jump on the bandwagon, you know, put their hand up and then go put their pom poms up. Why not now? You should have been doing that when that when that was brought to you last year. You should have stayed on that subject. But it's not. And at me, I don't go around just picking something just to get on this to say I'm on a bandwagon. I'm getting on something to go and benefit our scholars, our parents, staff, the community. Okay, and the stakeholders, that's why I jump on bang these things when I see them, okay? Well, Tony Lewis, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. No problem, brother. It's always good to be in the presence of a king. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, brother. Anytime.